thanks to Raihan. Um, basically, I learned about Raihan from one of my juniors. Um, Ayman Sadiq is also working for the 10 minute school. So he gave me this idea, and I found this idea very interesting an open speaking platform. So um, last night I was checking up on the event team that barriers to education and everything. Um, I would talk about something a little bit ahead of that. A little bit after after what happens when you get an university education. What do you do then? The career choices. This is another big issue a lot of us don't really talk about. A lot of us are more into like getting into university, but then comes the next big challenge. What to do after university education? Where to go after university education? And my experience of after I finished my um, undergrads from IBA, uh, my last class one was on 10th December. So from January, I was out there in the market. And I've seen a lot. And from what I've seen from January 2011, that's one thing that I would like to share in today's speech. So the first thing was about choosing a career. And as a kid, I had this habit of going through a lot of books. Um, he over there, what's your name? Tuman Namki Jishila? Himal. Himal was talking about three different types of education systems. I was part of both. Not the madrasa, but the other two. Because my dad was an army officer, so he got posted all around the world, and I had to travel with him all around the country. So was part of both um, Bangla medium education and English medium education. So, but one thing that I that he developed in me was reading, the habit of reading. I used, I love reading. Anything I I do nowadays even I have this habit. J at least ten pages a day, at least ten pages, whatever it is, just ten pages a day of reading. So one thing that I figured out I was really interested in the concept of astrophysics. There was a time in my life I was very interested in the concept of astrophysics and I was reading up on Stephen Hawking, the guy on whom a few days back there was a movie as well, like Theory of Everything, which got the, um, I think, Best Actor Award from Oscar as well. So while reading Stephen Hawking's book, I was reading, um, first of all, a business graduate is not supposed to read astrophysics, but I ended up reading on astrophysics. Second of all, when I was reading, I was looking at his description of the Big Bang Theory. And that was really interesting, the way he explained it. Our universe is actually expanding. And the way he goes back is that if it's expanding, then there would have been some point where it was not expanding, where it was just a point. And from there, the singularity, from there, it expanded. Now, to explain this expansion, and he gave an example. The example was, imagine that a balloon a not blown up balloon, a bl balloon with no air in it. And imagine putting two small dots on that balloon and then putting the air in the balloon to blow the balloon up. What happens is those two dots, the dots expand in size exponentially and the difference between the two dots increases as well. That's how he explained the Big Bang Theory. Now I'm not here to explain the Big Bang Theory to you. To me, when I was reading that, something hit me. That that's a career advice. That's the best career advice I ever got. That every one of us, while doing university education, we are faced with this choice of either following the mainstream career choices, like going for an MNC to work, going for a bank to work, going for a company to work, an established company to work, a brand name. You know, you could go to home and say that I work in Unilever, I work in DAT, I work in IDLC, I work in Citibank. Yeah, that sounds good. That sounds really good to your parents, that sounds really good to society. So that's one choice we have. The other choice is actually choosing something that's not that big. Imagine just your career decision being that dot on those balloons. Imagine two balloons. One which is not blown at all, but have the potential to be blown up have the potential to grow, and another one which is big already. So when you are making the decision to go and work for City Corp, or maybe Unilever, applying for the MTO for Unilever program, or maybe working for BAT, data officer, all those glamorous options, you're deciding to put a dot on an already big balloon. That's already blown, the market's saturated. One post 50 
60, even 100 plus applications. On the other hand, you can always choose not to go for them, not to go for the bigger balloon, but go for the smaller one. One that has not yet picked up, one that has not grown up in size yet, but you see the potential to grow. So what I did in my last four years after finishing my studies is I have been looking around for these small balloons. For example, this one, this concept is itself a small balloon as I see it. And that's what I've been identifying, the possi possibility to grow in small balloons. And if you could make your mark in these small balloons, when these grow, you're filled. You grow exponentially with it. For example, um, after my bachelor's in business administration, where we never even had a course related to operations management or supply chain management, while reading up, I figured out that supply chain, well, we don't have any professor. Like, I want to do a minor in supply chain. In IBA, they told us that they didn't sign any teacher. So that was like a balloon for me. Why didn't they sign? Does that mean that we don't have enough operations teachers? And yes, it turned out that's the answer. So um, I was a finance major and an eco minor, and I left both my major and minor to run after that small balloon. My master's was in operations management. While in operations management, I figured out that there is a small group of people in my university who study more or less the whole day, and they talk in a different language, mostly math. And when I was talking with them, they talked about this new concept of data analytics, business analytics, risk management. And when I was reading up on it, I found that, well, there is another small balloon. Why not go for that? So my dissertation was not in operations management. I convinced my department that, look, not interested. Can I go for the business analytics? And they said, yeah, fine, go for it. If you can handle it. Went for it again. And so far, all the decisions that I've taken, everywhere that I've invested, for example, another small balloon that I see is you guys all. Each of you, to me, looks like a smaller balloon. Why? Because you're at the start of your education or in the middle of the education. Very soon, you'll be graduating. And after graduating, you'll be following your career path. You'll be following a path to growth. Now, I try to put a dot in each of these balloons, try to affect their life, so that one day, when they do grow, these balloons grow bigger, my career, or not only my career, my influence goes bigger with it. That's my experience, and that's what I would like, like to share, that no matter where you come from, sometimes this habit of identifying growing skills, that's what has shown me the key to success. I've been in this teaching career for three years now, and Alhamdulillah, when I chose teaching in operations, um, I've applied in seven places, and I actually got offered in all the seven places. No one could actually reject me, and even now they can't. And now I'm, again, applying for PhD next year in another growing field, behavioral sciences. So this is my advice, that when I see all these young people around me about to make your decision, my advice is, Yes, society wants something from you. Society wants you to have a brand, have a seal. Yes, that's fine. But then again, being a brand but small dot is not worth it. If you can make a bigger dot in a smaller balloon and you can grow with it, that's a better shot. That was my advice. No, that was something that Stephen Hawking ended up advising me about my career choice. That's it. Any questions, if you want to ask anything from me? Anyone? I talk about career choices, education, career in education. If you have any question about how to, which one, which career in education to follow, where to go, I'm the man. That would be excellent. That would be, some people, I, that's what an entrepreneur is. In the end, a lot of people define a lot of ways of entrepreneur. I see the entrepreneur as the man in the balloon, the one who's blowing the balloon up. If you could be that, that's excellent. You're like coming up with your own new skill, own new concept. That's why I like this kid, um, Ayman Sadiq, a lot, because his concept of 10 minutes book was brilliant. I'm actually working with him in one of the projects to improve it further. Does that answer my question? Answer your question. Any other question? Don't be shy. Come on. Ask.
Vamos a vamos a vamos a vamos a Don't, don't go for it. Mm -hmm. Don't go for account uh, banking. But see, your situation, uh, I'll share one of my experiences. My dad, um, half an engineer, half an army. So he, on, the, on those times, they didn't have MISC. So they had Google. So he did a course on Google. So, so Jay, you know, the three idiots movie system, Jay, after I was born, I was field and engineer. So I, he wanted me to be an engineer. Um, did all courses for an engineer, and then one coaching for Buet, and I got an idea that no, 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 that's not the place. Tik boto nai, I mean, Swaraj no garu ichi. Simple as that. A guy from Sunrise, no, not from Sunrise, Omega. I learned the Omega coaching, and the guy who say who took our first class said that you have to study for 16 hours. I'm kono mati hisha to milai thakai. I mean, kipa vekka manush solo ganta kora. I mean, akono hisha to milai thakai. Sorry to say that. I mean, master's fees thau solo ganta kono puri milai. So not possible. So then I started for IBM. So my dad wanted me to still go, and he's the one. He's one of those first people to come up with the MIS. Army Tech, he was one of those leading people to come up with the MIS. So the curriculum design was by my dad. Um, the principal was my dad's fast. So basically, I had an open door policy over there. I could just walk in. I knew who's teaching what, everything. I knew what was there. And I could actually get out as being the most privileged kid from MIT. So what I decided is, I'm going to be chanty na pai. Kanata nida pai, right? In gondar bori kai gondar bori pari gisi with a little bit of something. Give that a chance. We can't take that, right? I mean, impossible. Quite waiting list of the school. And actually, wait. After that, again, I say, I'm going to go to Didn't even attend like that. So zero again. So you have to be resolute. My parents now know they had plan, but they now know that they cannot force the person into. They now know that Amaki Judi Kunvishuni force for it, not a good idea. It's going to be a complete not in that. But I let him be, let him be alone, he will figure out. Anything. So, my advice to you is exactly that. No matter whatever you get. See, if I would have gone to the engineering year, at this point, metallurgy had, where did we see? We didn't have a So, I would be teaching in Google. I would be somewhere up there, but I don't need to be. I never asked any of my connections from my dad, make your own. That's my advice. I give it a genuine advice. Any other questions? Yeah. I love talking. One of the biggest tricks was to shut me up. Now, when the family say, the trick is to shut him up. Not to make him talk, just to shut him up. So, and another thing is, um, while in IBA, um, you know, we have, like, I, being a teacher, sometimes I preach about other teachers. But still, we have teachers, the other class, like if you go on the Bokish Mambu for you, then alright. So I used to teach my class. I'm there here to chill, library, the room, the discussion room, the book in the other. The Taki third class. So when I was in second, third year, I used to teach. And so when I found one thing, Jay, this comes naturally. This is another advice I'll tell you guys. Jay, ask your class, Jay. Ask your, I was torturing my students from 10 to 1. Torturing the academic department. Target your classes. So I'm carrying out six day week from the target shooting university. I don't feel like going to work. That's my honest answer. I don't mean it. If you ask me in the last three years, have I gone to office? No. Have I gone to enjoy something? Yes. Yeah. Every day I've been there. First of all, what I do is I piss off students. That I in the kids. I take classes with them. And then I piss off my colleagues, work with them, have fun with them. And that's it. So when I go to work, I don't feel like going to work. The only that part is a chocolate out the high school. That's the only negative thing. I get up at 10 to go to office. But that's it. And another thing that I, that happened to me is, um, in my, uh, again, while in IBA, um, mentors are coaching on, I used to teach in mentors. And my dad was going through a very bad time. Um, heart disease. He was diagnosed with 90% block and single child. So we used to, I used to always look up to my dad being the most healthiest one. 
and he even still today lives earlier than me. So um, when he was diagnosed with 90%, that was a scary thing for all of us, for the whole family, we were in depression. So at that time, I did classes, bunked a lot of them, but I told mentors not to pass it. But that was, my dad was diagnosed around August 25th or something like that. And that was the day, um, admission time, prime time admission. So I needed to go to mentors. So one of the classes I could, was, I mean, have to go. So my, yeah, um, coordinator, the coordinator called me that now, Takif, Ashti Hobby Ashti. Cook, you have to come. Just take a class. So one thing that happened is, imagine this is a class, and imagine that this, that's the door. When I entered through that door, I felt like I left my worries, I left my depression behind that door when I entered the classroom. That's when I figured out that this actually is natural. That's why I decided, why work when I can do something natural and get paid for? Any other questions? Then try. Try different things out. Don't stop. See, another thing, another problem that I see in the young, younger gen generations is that even if you're not sure, then why not try things out? Try doing this, try doing that. No one will point a finger if you fail. But some people will. Just don't bother about that. There are, our, mother, our society has this pointing finger habit. So a lot of people will point fingers. Screw them. Just, sorry for my language, but screw them. When you are successful at something, people are going to forget your past. I was considered the biggest retard in my school. My results were so bad, so bad that my school didn't want to report them. Okay, my O-level results were incredibly bad. They didn't want to report it, Kantaratale competition in image of it. They wanted to disown me. No one cared. Because school attack I mean science museum, tried it, failed it. For I business as I'm doing good at it. That's my advice. Try. Experiment new stuff. Some way, some sometime you'll find something that you're really into and follow that. Mm-hmm. I listen to that. My advice, uh, marketing is a shit Keep an eye out. See, sometimes, the best solution, the best ideas, come from the simplest things.